And in other matters, senior government officials came to face to face with the challenges facing learners in Baringo County affected by floods who continue to learn under trees in the harsh weather conditions. The students are also using tents as their dormitories owing to lack of funds to put up facilities despite parents donating 30 acres of land to the school. This comes as senior government officials continue to tour schools to assess learning after months of closure. These were the scenes that greeted three principal secretaries and the government spokesperson Cyrus Oguna when they toured Salabani Secondary School in Baringo South. Learners barely protected from the scorching sun in their quest for education after their classrooms were washed away by floods. Uh, the way the students are learning under shrubs and uh, at the moment it's, it's, it's actually a hot season and most trees are going to shed uh, leaves and uh, they, they, they will not get enough uh, shade. Uh, we thank the students because they are really enduring the situation. The students were to be integrated at Sabor Secondary School, which is about 30 kilometers away, prompting the parents to donate a 30 hectare piece of land to construct a school which currently has only two classes and they use these tents as their dormitory. Students are living like uh, military officers, uh, staying in tents which you cannot even stay uh, inside these tents during daytime. And because of this corona issue, uh, piling students in one such small tent is equally risky. The school is seeking assistance to build infrastructure. The government has been able to release 19.5 billion shillings, broken down into 4.6 for primary schools and 14.9 for secondary schools to be able to support management of this process within the school at the same time be able to facilitate the um, observance of the containment measures against COVID. Meanwhile, in Naro County, three principal secretaries and a chief administrative secretary toward various institutions hailing the county for reporting a 90% turnout in school despite being among the counties leading with teen pregnancies. A few schools that we visited yesterday in Naro West where at least we are getting about 92 percent and uh, most of the, those are because some of the students are either uh, are left at home and we are following that up uh, our, our county commissioner and the team are, are following up those students who have not yet reported to school clearly this the the the, the, the this uh, disease has also created necessity for government now to look at infrastructure and uh, this is our recommendation will be that uh, going forward we have to re reprioritize uh, more so that we see more funds given to schools to expand the facilities. I would want to report that we have uh, released 19 billion shillings to our schools, 14.9 billion shillings for our secondary school and 4.6 billion shillings for our primary schools as capitation. Within this capitation, we have uh, 15 billion shillings in the total capitation of 60 billion that we usually release to our secondary schools, 5,000 shillings per child that we set aside for maintenance and improvement of our infrastructure. To Merivika, because I wish you less Ningi, the Mengizingatia, Magiza, Vizara, Afia, Kusu Corona, to Mirna, one of the Zengi, Wakuna, Barakoa, Kuna. In Kirinyaga County, 98% of learners have reported back to school. Lands Permanent Secretary Nicholas Muraguri, who toured schools within the county, put school heads to task to account for those who have not resumed learning. What is important that every effort is uh, being put and deployed by government and partners to ensure that we can trace and be able to bring facility the, the child to come back to school. And it has been impressive. I mean, there's no school you have gone where the head is not aware where the child is. Tell you the child is admitted in hospital. The child is like this, like this. I went to the other school and you call that school, they, they confirm, yes, the child was able to go. For Channel One News, I'm Safin Aching Omar.